Hi, and today we are going to study the concept of unsteady heat conduction. Unsteady heat conduction. So in this case, the temperature T is the function of <coughs> x direction, y direction, z direction and time tau. But here we are dealing with only one direction. So temperature is function of only x direction and time tau. Note that for the temperature I am making the use of small t and for time I am making the use of tau. So in this case if the thermal conductivity of the substance is very high so if k tends to infinity then we know that r due to conduction is equal to l by k times a. So if r is infinity then the resistance due to conduction is zero and now we know that q is equal to the change in temperature divided by the resistance due to conduction so if the resistance due to uh, conduction tends to zero then the change in temperature will also tends to zero and if the thickness l of the substance is very small so suppose it's zero then we know that the resistance due to conduction is equal to l by k a so if l is very small so the resistance due to conduction will tends to zero and now we know that q is equal to the change in temperature upon the resistance due to conduction so if the resistance due to conduction tends to zero then the change in temperature will also tends to zero so such type of analysis where the change in temperature and the resistance due to conduction are zero is called pure lumped analysis now if suppose we take a sphere a copper sphere suppose the thermal conductivity of this copper sphere is uh, 375 watt per meter kelvin and if this sphere is kept in an oven let's say the temperature of the oven is 200 degrees celsius and after some time if i expose this sphere to the ambient air temperature that is at 30 degrees celsius say if Ti is the initial temperature of the sphere and T infinity is the is the temperature of this ambient surrounding if Ti is the initial temperature of sphere and if T infinity is equal to ambient air temperature so if Ti is greater than T infinity then the sphere will eventually cool and if Ti is less than T infinity then the sphere will become more hotter. So we can conclude that here the heat transfer is due to heat convected which is equal to change in energy. So we can write this statement in our mathematical form. So we will get <coughs> integration from 0 to tau h a t minus t infinity which is equal to m c p t i minus t so here uh, t i is the initial temperature of the sphere t is the temperature of the sphere at time tau uh, c p is the specific heat capacity of the sphere m is mass of the sphere h is the heat transfer coefficient of surrounding and a is the surface area of sphere now let's look at the dimension of this both equation here we have watt per meter square kelvin times area times temperature so here we have joule per second and here we have kg times joule per kg kelvin times kelvin so here we have joule so in order to make the dimensioning balance we need to multiply this equation by time so let's do that so integration of 0 to tau h a t minus t infinity d tau is equal to m c p t i minus t so we can write this equation in another form like 
j t minus t infinity d tau is equal to m c p t i minus m c p t it is important to note that here the temp here the temperature t is not constant because it's gonna vary with time so if we differentiate this equation with respect to tau then we get h a t minus t infinity which is equal to negative m c p d t by d tau so we can rearrange this equation h a t minus t infinity d tau is equal to negative m c p d t so h a upon m c p negative d tau is equal to d t upon t negative t infinity so now integrating this equation from 0 to tau h a by m c p d tau which is equal to integration from t i to t d t upon t minus t infinity so here we get negative h a tau upon mass is volume times the density so rho c p v which is equal to ln t minus t infinity from the limits t i to t so it's negative h a tau divided by rho c p v which is equal to ln t minus t infinity upon t i minus t infinity so we can write this equation as e to the power 1 negative h a tau upon rho c p v which is equal to t minus t infinity upon t i minus t infinity where t i is the initial temperature of the sphere t is the temperature of the sphere at time tau and t infinity is the ambient air temperature or we can call it as a surrounding temperature h is the heat transfer coefficient of the surrounding a is the surface area of the sphere rho is the density of the sphere cp is the specific heat capacity of the sphere v is the volume of sphere so now <coughs> we know that rho cp v by h a has the dimensions of time so we can call this term as a thermal time constant so we can rearrange this equation by adding this term by e to the power negative tau upon <coughs> tau thermal is equal to t minus t infinity upon t i minus t infinity and now we know that the term h a tau upon rho c p times v is dimensionless now if we multiply and divide this equation by a that is area thermal conductivity k and volume v we get h a tau upon rho c p v into area upon area into thermal conductivity upon thermal conductivity into volume upon volume then <coughs> we get h times v upon k times a inside the bracket k by rho c p times a square by v square times tau and now if we introduce a new term that's v by a is lc which is characteristic length <clears throat> so if we put this value in this equation we'll get h lc by k set the bracket alpha times <coughs> 1 by lc square times tau since k by rho cp is equal to alpha which is called as thermal diffusivity so this is nothing but a byte number and this is a fourier number so byte number is equal to h l c by k so we can write this as l by k a divided by 1 upon h a which is also called as resistance to conduction 
by resistance to convection. So, <clears throat> if the resistance for pure lumped analysis, we note that the resistance to conduction is zero. So the byte number will be equal to zero. And now, if the thickness of the uh, the substance is increased slightly, then the resistance to conduction will also increase slightly, and the change in temperature will also increase slightly. So a byte number as it is directly proportional to the resistance to conduction, it will also increase slightly. So the byte number is less than 0 0.1. So now if the thickness of the substance is increased to much extent, then the resistance to conduction will also increase to much more extent. And as it is directly proportional to byte number, the byte number, the byte number will also extend to to the greater amount so byte number will be greater than 0 0.1 so when the byte number is less than 0 0.1 we consider it as a lumped analysis because the experimental uh, readings by this assumption is of only marginal difference of plus or minus 5%. So this was all information regarding the unsteady heat conduction. So thank you for watching this video.